Welcome to the one within all to another episode of Interverse Podcast. And if you don't know tonight's guest, prepare to get fired up. If you do know him, you're probably already fired up. We've got Jim Gale, the freedom fighter through building food forests over at Food Forest Abundance. We last talked to him over back in December of 2021. So my how time has flown. <laughs> we were going to hang out at Music and Sky, but uh, some technical difficulties on transit prevented that but perhaps we'll run into each other out in the real world again before too long super excited to talk to jim there's pretty much nobody that is more enthusiastic other than maybe matt powers <laughs> when it comes to permaculture and gardening and liberating us uh, and removing our dependency you know taking back our power which uh, i've said it for years not that i'm necessarily living up to the statement but I'm, I'm working on it and i've said it for years if we were if everyone quit their normie jobs and just started growing food the world would pretty much sort itself out <laughs> it's all this dependency and all this uh that's what creates slavery it's just as simple as that so jim welcome to interverse welcome back man it's really good to have you i'm super excited to hear about what you've got cooking up what's new your current talking points and for everybody that may be new to you, can you please introduce yourself and the incredible work you've been up to? Well, thank you so much, Chance. It's all interverse, right? I just love the title. I love your opening. And I'm just loving the comments, the good energy in this room. So what I'm going to share with you all today is the solution to all of the world's biggest problems. And where does the world exist? Well, it exists in here and it exists out there. I'm talking about the innerverse problems as well as the outerverse problems. Um, and here it is. It's pretty simple. When we simply rise our energy, our frequency, I'll start with my favorite, one of my favorite five quotes, the Tesla quote. If you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. But I'm going to change one word. Don't think. Thinking is the past. Bring your energy into your heart and your stomach and feel or experience this world, this frequency, this life in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. And when we can get connected to the frequency, to the energy of source, of God, of nature, which in my opinion is all the same thing, then we can start creating life again. All good ideas come from the gap between the thoughts. And that's when we focus on the frequency, the gap opens up, and then we're free. Oh, man. The uh, last time we talked, we got into some extremely helpful information about how you can visualize your own success. And even that's a little bit of thinking. But, you know, the <laughs> that was fun. Your, your face froze and like a blur. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you, you did such a great job walking us through some of your life story before and explaining how you did some pretty incredible manifestations throughout life, believing that you could, putting your mental faculties to it and really trusting yourself and trusting life that we're actually, not only are we allowed to have the life that we want and to have a good life, everything in nature is actually designed to support us in that decision. And when life feels like a grind and we're beating our head against a wall, it's because we're doing things not in alignment with the way nature wanted it to happen. So, you know, it's actually, once we get on that train and into that flow state, it's actually things become quite a bit easier. Not that you don't have to put effort in, but it just is, there's fun to it. So <laughs> you don't have to put effort in. You truly don't have to put effort in. Magic happens when we start raising our frequency and resonating, vibrating with the tribe of other faithful and courageous people. It's blowing my mind every day. I've get, I'll give you an example. Four days ago, um, I've been hearing about electroculture for, well, put it this way, for my whole life being in farming and gardening, I've only heard about it a few times until the last two months. And then I've been hearing about it from all these different people saying, you got to check out electroculture. And I was like, ah, oh, okay, I will eventually. Then three days ago, two times in the same day, two different friends that don't know each other said, Jim, check this out. And I decided at that moment, the universe is telling me something. It's like, wake up, Jim. And I decided I am going to get electroculture all over our off-grid community in Central Florida. An hour and a half later, a fella named Aaron shows up. I knew he was coming. All I knew about Aaron was his name. It's the only thing I knew about the guy. 
So after talking, showing him around a little bit, he just seemed like full of life energy. I said, so what do you do, by the way? Electric culture. The moment I decided that that's what we wanted, all of a sudden, it, and I, I'm not saying that I made it happen. I'm saying that the universe, God's source somehow made it happen when I was finally open to it. Now in the last three days, we've got electro culture all over the place. And here's where it gets exponentially nuts. <laughs> he made the claim that these systems that we're putting in the ground will disperse the chemtrails. And I said, I will believe it when I see it. I've seen it for three days. The chemtrail, and I got it on film. I got a plane coming right over the top of us with this massive trail that you can see for miles to the south. Right over our property, the trail is dispersed immediately by about 70, 80%. And then when it gets to the other side of the property to our north, it comes back again. And you could see it on film. It's some mind-blowing stuff going on. That is so fun. I remember the first time I <laughs> witnessed the dispersion of a, a chem cloud and it came through using like Orgon tech, right? But That's there's what ways got. to do Part it. Yes. Yeah, I, I had a, I have a, this like power wand thing. There's like Orgon device yeah. that yeah. Uh, it doesn't, it, it kind of broke, but when it was working, <laughs> I could just point it at the sky and it was like erasing lines off of a piece of paper with an eraser. Just like, I don't want that there anymore. It's so wild. Yeah. So the solutions are super simple and electric culture is something I don't know a lot about, but I have heard the word bandied around. I am supposed it's in the ether at this time. It sure Can is. Can you tell us more? Like what if you're clearly, you just started learning about it. So you have a lot of fresh gnosis on the subject. Yeah. Can you enlighten us? It's so, yes. Um, what I can do is share my process of enlightened, right? So what is the problem? It's government. It's mind control. It's a mind that is programmed and who's it programmed by? For most people in our culture, it's programmed by people who don't have our best intentions in their minds, in their hearts, right? The opposite of government is a free mind. It's a light mente. It's enlightenment. This, another layer of the scam in our society is that enlightenment is an impossibility or in, almost impossible to achieve. Only one guy can be enlightened and the rest of us, you know, that is all a bunch of BS. It's bad science, it's belief systems, and it's bullshit. Enlightenment doesn't mean that I can bend steel or any of that shit. It just means that, no, I do not comply with tyranny. It means that I have the faith and courage to say no in the face of tyranny very publicly. For instance, I do not pay any taxes on my labor. I do not pay any land taxes, right? So these are kind of layers of the puzzle that we're putting together. And I do so incredibly publicly. We build all of our buildings. We don't ask the government for permission. We are not going to condone them by asking the slave master, if I can have permission, Mr. Slave Master, do, do. no, 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 no. We're doing it and we're shining such a big spotlight on it. And here's the layer of service, of strategy and service, which go to hand in hand. The more we serve our community, the more support we're getting. We are now have sheriffs coming in and supporting us. We have politicians coming in. We have educators coming in, religious leaders coming in, and they're seeing, experiencing freedom. And they're saying, I am not going to use force and violence against you. And if they do, we've got cameras set up, like literally spotlights set up where we will demonstrate that we are here to help our community grow food and be free. We just installed a major food forest at a local school, right? So back to your kind of question on my ramble here is we're stacking all of the functionality of permanent culture, permaculture, using the design principles. We started with a blank canvas of sand. And I mean really inert, lifeless sand. Why was it inert and lifeless? Because we dug a 25 foot deep four acre pond and we use that material to build up our land by six feet to keep it out of the flood zone. So most of the sand came down from 10 feet underground. There's not much life in sand that's 10 feet underground. In one year, we have this incredible food forest by stacking the functions, by layering the soil, 
the mulch, the biochar, the compost tea, the analemma water, now the electroculture. We're putting it all in together and it's so much fun. Well, Jim, it's really cool to have you on today because, and I do want to talk more about the electroculture and what you know about it because I'm new to that idea. But Me too. last week, our episode was with my buddy Topher or Christopher Gardiner. I love Christopher. Yeah. Well, how can you not? <laughs> Seems yeah. like everybody knows him. He, he's yeah. amazing. And we learned from him that you can actually use biochar in like paint, mix it in with your paint, and it creates an EMF shielding for the structure that you're building. I never the biochar is like That's if you incredible. got a food forest, you got biochar forever. Yeah. Man, that is incredible. I'm gonna use biochar in my paint now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's that it's literally that simple because yeah. it's really carbon that is yeah. doing the uh the blocking action. So yeah, the bad carbon. We don't want carbon. That's such a bunch of BS. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I feel like I've heard about electroculture being something that was done uh, in pre like the previous century ago. I'm going to share the limitations. I know this much. In fact, nobody even can explain electricity, right? Electricity can be created and used, but we can't explain it. Electroculture is the same thing. It, it, at least for me, it's way beyond my ability to explain how and why this works. Here's what I know. Copper is an incredible conductor. The earth has magnetism. The energy has ether. The ether has energy. And so when we use copper to bring that energy somehow into the soil, and then the soil and the earth puts the energy back out, somehow it creates more energy transfer. And that is the limit of, but that makes sense to me. Okay. So yeah, that makes sense. As far as I understand, it's about like the difference in charge between the sky and the earth and the sky is just full of electricity. The whole thing. Boom. The whole world. We're, we're made of energy, vibration, frequency, electricity, right? Somehow. And, and that's then when we harness that. And so we're putting in these different devices that look like Tesla devices. And we've got a statue that my partner Marcel sent from South Africa. A guy named Hank Willis Thomas created this statue. And it's mind blowing. It's an arm. It's a farmer's arm. And it's like. 10 feet tall and made of stainless steel, a farmer's arm holding an arm of a force with a baton. And the farmer's arm is basically saying no more. I do not consent with any more force and violence. And right under the statue is this Tesla device and you can feel it. You can put your hands on the statue and you can feel the frequency of it. It's freaking profound. <laughs> Oh, it's amazing how simple the real truth and the real solutions are, Yeah, you know, and actually what else is super exciting about the time we're in is how close we are to, to the transition into real freedom. Like there's been a lot of work done to make us believe in the dystopian future and transhuman yeah. nightmare and yada, yada, yada. And even good people have been unwittingly doing that work, spreading a lot of doom and gloom. I try to avoid that. Like I, I recognize that there's definitely conspiracy in the world i don't shy away from talking about it but the biggest conspiracy is that nobody's in charge that it's a bunch of warring factions trying to take over take you know a little chunk of your attention and funnel that into their game but yeah. your attention can turn things into actual paradise in the place where you live and that's what is yeah. most important is that we get connected to the place that we actually live and bring solutions there and those solutions are close at hand I'd love for you to tell us more about like what's food forest abundance been up to lately. What's yeah. has your mission evolved in any ways that are interesting since 2021? Cause that's been a while. It's, it's evolved quite a bit. So we learn in permaculture, you take feedback and you make adjustments, right? So the first thing we learned is when people want to have a food forest, if those people want to be involved in their food forest, the food forest thrives. If somebody out of scarcity wants to put a food forest in the ground, but they don't want to ever go interact with their food forest, then there's a missing link in energy there. And what happens over time when people have a food forest is it draws them in. You know, the, people think gardening and growing food farm. Well, farming is hard work because farming is unsustainable and unnatural the way we, the way we know it today, those big monocultures that are out there, I just read that there's 900 million acres of farmland in the United States. There's 44 million acres of lawn. If all we did 
we're turn our lawns or half of our lawns into edible regenerative landscapes, landscapes that no poisons. The number there's two control mechanisms that the evil, wicked, deep state, psychopaths, whatever you call them, there's two mechanisms that they use to control the mind of the asset, the slave. And that is fear and lower vibration emotions. That, that's the number one, by the way. That's the foundation. When we rise up out of fear because we're more than this and we realize that, that's the number one. Faith and courage is literally the armor of God. Right? And I don't pretend to know what God means because it's infinitely more than anybody can describe. But faith and courage is a frequency that becomes power, right? Not force. Force is the opposite of that. It's power. Force is violence. Power is like the meek shall inherit the earth. The meek are the people that are very powerful and loving and service oriented that don't that only use their power for good. That's why the meek shall inherit the earth. It's very simple. So um, anyway, so I'm kind of layering the different ways we've evolved. We've learned how to communicate the message. And now we are in, we're helping people in 48 countries. Now we launched 22 months ago with three people and I was dead broke. We are now in 48 countries and 49 U.S. states. We have an off-grid community that has all the food, water, and energy on a private 430-acre lake. It's, it's like magic is happening every day, all day long now. And in fact, one of the biggest realizations is people who think that farming is hard, they don't want to make the first step because they think they have a brown thumb or a black thumb or they just don't know what to do and it, it creates fear. So we now offer a 30 minute free strategy session with a permaculture designer, a professional grower, and anybody can come in and within 30 minutes, you can be off and running at no charge. If people want to take the next step and get the design process, then that's how we create our voluntary exchange of value, which is true capitalism. So we've evolved in massive ways. We're now opening up Freedom Farm Academies in Ghana in Thailand, pretty soon in Sri Lanka and Lebanon, Canada, North America, all over the world. And these Freedom Farm Academies are demonstration sites demonstrating abundance and how to serve. Man, <laughs> super exciting. Uh, have you got, I know that you get around. Have you traveled to any of the uh, other countries where these academies are going up? So I've been doing some speaking circuit here. I was just uh, at the keynote at the Next Steps Conference in Atlanta, and I've got a lot of different speaking pieces coming up. If anybody wants a speaker, I love sharing the message. Um, but other countries, I haven't been out of country now for like six years, partly because I won't get a vaccine passport. Um, and of course, I won't get any jabs or any anything that's made in the lab, chemically produced, any of that stuff. I'm the opposite of that. Nature has all the answers. So to answer your question, locally, yes, out of, out of country, no. Another question I have is, and I think I know the answer in a yes or no sense, but have you witnessed, I mean, probably in yourself, you could say for sure, yes, but have you witnessed any like change in consciousness from people who have Massive. put in food for us? Like, how does this affect people on a on all levels whenever this is now part of their life? What well, I like the chicken and the egg, or the what comes first, enlightenment or the Garden of Eden. They both come <laughs> at the same it, time. both at the same time. Yeah, yeah. If you if you walk into the, in fact, this is the catalyst for the creation of the Freedom Farm Academy model. Is I would invite people to God's Landing, and I would give them tours. The intention for God's Landing was world leaders would fly in because we also have like a mile long paved runway on the east part of our, it's, it's on the neighbor's property, but it's basically borders us. The intention is world leaders would come to God's Landing and they would see freedom. They would experience freedom. So after I'd give these people tours, they would go home and plant food. They would go home and create a food forest in their yard. Before that, before the experience of it, they didn't have the confidence to do it themselves. So the best thing that we could do is we could become demonstrators. And by the way, there's no logical reason not to grow food instead of lawns. A, a perennial, which is perennials are plants that you plant once and they continuously produce more and more abundance 
forever. You know, you can count the seeds in an apple, but you cannot count the apples in a single seed. It's infinite. So when you become a demonstrator of these food forest systems, not only will you have massive benefits in health and financial savings and beauty and joy and butterflies and birds, but now your neighbors want to do it, right? So that's exactly what these are. They're seeds of abundance, seeds of freedom that we're putting all around the world with the help of the Permaculture Network and all the other liberty-minded networks, and it's just expanding. So to answer your question, we are in the ascension. We are in the apocalypse, which means lifting the veil. We are in the great awakening right now. And that's what everybody's feeling. It's so exciting. Unless you're in fear, then it just sucks. If you can get out of fear, then it's just joy. <laughs> so what else are you excited about? <laughs> <laughs> there's some magic everywhere. Every day there's magic. I mean, another fun story. I had a gal, Erin, who came from Carolina. She's a Freedom Farm Academy partner. And then a friend um, named uh, Dave, um, David, gosh, anyway, I can't remember his last name at the moment, but he helps kids graduate from high school early, Rodriguez. And the two came to God's Landing and th they were blown away. We were having a great time for about an hour, hour and a half. And then we sat in the camper. It was 95 degrees out. We sat in the camper under the AC with solar panels, creating our cooling, which I always think is kind of cool. And Aaron says, without knowing what David did, Aaron said, my daughter just sent me a video this morning of a guy that lives in California that helps people graduate early. And she wants to get a hold of the guy. The guy was sitting across the table from her. That's impossible. In a Newtonian <laughs> physics world, that's not possible. And this is happening every day. Yeah, I mean, that's to me, that's exactly what I was art articulating with the idea that when you're actually in the flow of what source or nature or God wants us to do, how those how to do those things, automatic magic happens. That's, you know, like I, I cover a lot of the occult and esoteric things in the world in this show. But I never really tell people to try to go and do some kind of ceremony for magic or like anything on those lines, because to me, it's really evident that when you get your life right, like morally, health wise and in all other dimensions that you can really, it all kind of boils down to like morals and health. If you get that in alignment, then you don't need any special extra magic juju other than just be like. I know this is what I want. And I know this is right. You say it, you write it down, maybe as simple as that. And just to make it known and communicate with life, what it is that you think and you feel is best for the next direction and next step. And if you're in flow with the nat natural, then you're also, and you know, at the end of the day, it's like, if you're taking really good care of your health and you're a moral person, then you can trust yourself that whatever wells up that you feel that you want is actually a good thing that you know, yeah. you trust yourself. And then that's all the real spurring on that the magic needs to then take place in ways that are beyond what you could have imagined if you tried to construct it all down to every last detail. Way beyond my, like the mind is the past, the heart is the future. And when we sit in the present, that's from, in my experience of the manifestation of these things, when we sit in the present, feeling the present, then that's when the inspired ideas come. And then when we feel the energy come through us, that's when we make the phone call. That's when we get up and take action. That's when, like the other day, it was three in the morning and I'll share this, this is so exciting. Anybody listening, by the way, we have no NDAs. We have no non-competes. We have no patents. None of that BS. We're about open source. Let's change the world. And here's the thing. It's also good for me. It's also good for everybody on my team that we don't have any of those things because it's a disconnect from the abundance that is who we are, right? So um, we have created a school model. If anybody out there is a teacher or you know a teacher, the school model that we have designed that have, has flown through us somehow when we sit peacefully in meditation. And by the way, that doesn't mean I sit for hours at a time. It means right now. I'm always one breath away from having a, a free mind. And so are you, if you practice. It wasn't like this before. 
because my mind was so cluttered with programs and fears and worries and anxious thoughts and what's going to happen then, what happened yesterday, blah, 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 blah. Right here, right now is the present. So in that experience, we have created a school model. Check this out. We're having a school at all of our Freedom Farm Academies who want them because again, we have no hooks. Anybody can work with us anytime. They cannot work with us anytime. Our contract is based on the permaculture ethics. So most of our Freedom Farm Academies will have a school, 25 kids. The parents pay whatever is logical for that particular school. In our area, we're going to charge $1,000 per month per student. We're going to have a room that's made by, uh, it's an earth-built school room, which that's going to be a class too, by the way, is building the school room. And so that's 25 grand in revenue per month. Now, a private school in our area currently is 2,000 bucks a month. So it's half the price of a current private school. But here's where it goes exponential. The first objective of the students is to become self-reliant, to produce all of their own food, to learn about energy productive production, to learn about water, and to learn about entrepreneurialism and service. That, because we're giving them a head start, they'll have all of their own food right off the bat. We're starting in September, this school. And then they go into their parents' yards. And with groups, there's, there's actually going to be three organizers of the school, the primary curriculum teacher, an assistant, and the design and install manager. And we are also building a nursery. The students are going to help propagate and use the permaculture principles and they're going to share 50% of the nursery profits are going to go right back to the school. And then when the students go into their parents' yards, they're going to produce all of the food their parents need. Then when that's done, they're going to go into society, into the community, and put food forests at private and public locations. And they're going to receive a value for that. They're going to obtain a yield, which is in our case, it might be fiat, it might be trade, it might be gold and silver, it might be some type of blockchain. Within 12 to 18 months, the school itself will be a financial abundance creating system. And then these schools will explode all over the world and the students, the schools themselves will be the growers of the Garden of Eden throughout our societies. And... <laughs> I mean, like, it's not exaggeration when you say go exponential. Exponential. It's yeah. uh, it's quite wild to imagine what we might be talking about a year from now. <laughs> yeah, it's exciting, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, dude, it's extremely exciting. I love that whole idea. I mean, there's nothing, especially, no, there's nothing wrong with uh, education, but turning people over to the state for that is obviously insane always was had to be done at gunpoint originally because people understood taking their kids off the farm was going to make them dumber and yeah. <laughs> less useful so yeah. uh, i love that whole model it's incredible i know that enthusiasm is a big answer to the question i'm about to drop on you but and also i wanted to point out that you're saying like i don't know what god is but enthusiasm that comes from the greek Theos in Theos, you know, it means inspired by the divine. So I think enthusiasm is an indic very indicative of whether or not you've got the source connection. But how, because you're the guy, you're the spokesperson for all this, you've been all over making it happen. What are some good strategies? So, for like uh, where I'm coming from, my parents, they've got plenty of means. They could even hire people, they wouldn't even have to do the work themselves if they didn't want to. They've got some good backyard space, totally good. You know, I've talked to them about this more than once and they was just like, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I know you can't like mind control people into doing the right thing or doing what you want them to do, but what are some good strategies for communicating these ideas to the people in our lives that we know would benefit from them immensely? The best strategy by far that I've experienced is having them visit a permaculture site a site that actually, because it's an experience, it's Frequency. a sensory explosion. The sights, the sounds, the smells, the tastes, everything about it, it becomes so much, it's palpable. You can feel it. People go into these systems and they are changed. Something happens with them. And, you know, there's, this quote keeps coming to mind and I got to spit it out because it's so profound for me. 
Napoleon Hill, who wrote the books Think and Grow Rich, which is like one of the all time most popular books ever sold. He was commissioned by some um, wealthy people back, I think it was 70, 80 years ago or so. And he was commissioned to study the most successful people in the history of the world and to then write a book on what made them so successful. He deducted after a lifetime of study of these people, whatever the mind can conceive and believe it can achieve. Whatever my mind, whatever your mind can conceive and believe it can achieve. That's a pretty big statement. If you sit with that for a little bit, it's kind of a godly statement. We are spirit. We are part of all that is. We are part of the omnipresence and omnipotency of source, of God, of spirit, right? And so when we tap into that, there's absolutely no limits to this. And then the question that I've been obsessed with for 15, well, I was obsessed for about 13 years. And then I've been joyfully obsessed for the last two. And by the way, that was the whole difference. I had done $1.3 billion in the mortgage industry. And I went from 20 million in net worth down to negative 80,000. I had no job. I had no income. I put my, I borrowed some money from a friend and built a studio at a mall where we demonstrated permaculture. That was, that was November of 2019. It was rocking. It was the most incredible alive. It was a kiosk actually. And it was, we were rocking. It closed down three months later because of not because of COVID COVID didn't shut it down. Government shut it down. They shut down the system. So anyway, I was broke. And I went through suffering. And that's when I decided to step into faith and courage because obsession is a scarcity driven energy. As soon as I jumped into joyful obsession, I started bawling. I remember the step I was taking on a meditation walk late at night and boom, it, it then since then, that's when the magic has been happening. And so if anybody out there is living in fear, Fear is the contraction of life, of creativity, of spirit. It's the contraction of everything good, shame, humiliation, all those things. Step with all of your being into faith and courage and joy and service. Anybody who's serving somebody is feeling good if they're serving out of the joy of service. And then what happens is it comes back I don't know if it's tenfold, but it's significantly more. And then when it comes back in permaculture principles, you create a yield and then you return the excess. And then when you return the excess, then more comes and then you turn and then more comes. It's a beautiful process. There's, <laughs> I hope that everyone out there is like really internalizing what you just said. Cause I had to go through a similar lesson. I spent like doing this show. I spent years obsessed with it and grinding and trying to make it into something. And then there was a threshold that I crossed where it became more about the fun and the service. And it's hard to say where that threshold was exactly, but it came about the time when I started connecting with the people that were actually tuning in. Whenever I found a way to do that, it was in Telegram, actually. Telegram is really helpful for uh, yeah. communicating with people, especially when you get a lot of censorship and shadow banning on the mainstream for the type of things you might talk about. So at the point where I could uh, experience it and co-experience the joy that the content and the enthusiasm of these conversations was bringing to some people, you know, the ones that deigned to join the Telegram channel, that was when I crossed the threshold from obsession to... <laughs> Joy, joyful obsession. Yeah. Maybe it's just another word is just like having so much fun that it's yeah. uh, an effortless flow state. But that yeah. was the big turning point for me when I was then able to no longer be in a scarcity mindset about anything. And all of a sudden doors opened and resources appeared. And now <laughs> like uh, what you, you said so many good things. We also should really hone in on that point of what the mind can imagine it can achieve. Yeah. And that is so important because yeah. it means that your imagination isn't 
this way of thinking that is some kind of like fictional flight of fancy or fantasy. It means that the imagination is a portal that you can step through to become who you want to be, be where you want to go, do what you want to do, all of that. But that's one reason why language is so important, why a creative practice in your life of some kind, and it doesn't even have to be art per se. It doesn't have to be drawing or painting or music, although those things are very helpful, but something that you're creating, anything that you're creating (laughs) is hugely important to that imagination portal staying open. Because if you can't imagine a different life for yourself, if you don't have the words to describe what life would be like in a, in an improved way, I mean, that's actually, I bring this point up a lot, but I once had a little bit of a dark exploration. I mean, it wasn't dark for me, but it was dark to read kind of, (laughs) I was reading some letters from slave owners to each other. And they're like, yeah, the best thing is to just make sure your slaves don't have the words to describe a life or imagine a life better than what they have. Make sure they only have the vocabulary so that they think that their their current life is the best it could possibly be. And then they'll be happy doing what they're doing and yada, yada. But that's hugely wow. important that's amazing i you know that's profound when i love learning these new little tips right paint with biochar and the the slave owners that makes complete sense and that's what the book 1984 by the way is all about that there's the memory hole and the thought police it's about it's george orwell and it came out in 1948 and it's about how they were going to create a dystopian future Well, the premise of the book was actually false because it was already happening. J.P. Morgan, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, they got together over 100 years ago and they bought, they actually commissioned a study to find the most influential mass media in the world. And then, well, I think it was in the United States, but then Europe, the United States, it's everywhere. Then they bought them all. Right. And why did they buy them all? This is 100 years ago before the book 1984 came out. This was for one reason to control the mind of the slave. Entertain mente. Entertain is to hold and mente is mind. Enter the mind hold. Right. And and you also talked about the the vortex, the gateway. Fear closes that 100%. Right. It's only when we open up to bigger things that those new things, that new energy can flow. Yeah, dude, life is potential and death is, you know, collapsing down into a single outcome or love and fear. Same exact type of thing as you it blew my mind to consider, as you said, the apple seed has infinite apples in it. Right. <laughs> I mean, we, we walk around the, the community today and there's kids. They did a, a like a treasure hunt thing where they're collaborating to find all the different neat things, birds and fruits and all this. And people were pulling these big radishes out of the ground like that long. And they're just, it is so abundant in a natural system. We've got a living salad bar, right? And again, I don't want to be a farmer. I want to simply walk out into my yard and have a radical abundance of food. We've got 230 types of food growing already, plus uh, seven types of fish, snails, crayfish, some edible water plants. Um, We actually, in our pond, we um, put uh, 14,000 fish in the pond. And those fish, sunnies, bass, and crappies, catfish, mosquito minnows. You know, by the way, there's no mosquito issues when you put fish in a pond fish eat the mosquitoes. So don't spray any ponds with poisons. So now we use the water from that pond on a solar timer to fertigate the food forest, which means to fertilize and irrigate. Right. And it's so neat how it all works together. It's an epic abundance creation system. One thing I was wondering about is, um, do you first, I have a couple of questions. Let's just start with one. Do you have anybody do you have like different people working at food forest abundance for the different climate zones? Like, are you able to even do food forest in places with long winters? Yeah. One of my buddies in Northern Minnesota has 300 different species of edible and medicinal plant. You walk, when I visit his property, it's paradise. It's absolute paradise. There's just life, an explosion of butterflies and life everywhere. He's got birds that he's documented in his food forest that have never been documented in the United States. 
Russian birds. <laughs> because what do animals do when they find paradise? They want to live there. And so that's in northern Minnesota off the tip of Lake Superior. We've got clients in New Mexico, clients in desert countries, clients all over the world. We have a design team using the permaculture principles that can design for every zone. And so the answer is yes, yes, yes. We have a cooperative network and those are the installers. And then we have the Freedom Farm Academy network and the Abundance Ambassador network. So we're bringing together all of these different networks of freedom lovers and solution people to, you know, in fact, there's a million people protesting today in just, a, I think it was just one country. I don't know if it was Brazil or somewhere in Europe there. I heard there was a million people protesting today. If those people would quit yelling at buildings and people who don't really give a shit and they would go out into their gardens and plant seeds and plant food, then they'd be free. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> can we just get you over there with a megaphone? Like, yeah. go plant some seeds. Boom. <laughs> Right? Yeah, the you know the powers that were they are perfectly happy to let you out in the street and have a little yeah you know pity party pout time. They've got your energy. They're controlling your energy. You know, I mean, I don't hate anybody. I'm aware that Billy G and all these crazy psychopaths they're not even they're NPCs. They're they're humiliation based non player characters who are are their their illness disease to the max. Right. I don't pay. I used to pay a lot of attention, by the way. And that's what I've learned that paying attention to the ghosts, the balloons, the aliens, all this crazy stories out there. We could get down those rabbit holes all day long, every day. And how would we feel? I know how I felt. I spent years after I sold my company. I spent years, 12 hours a day learning every rabbit hole. And when I finally came out of that, and started putting my energy into actually creating freedom, then that changed everything. Absolutely. Uh, I do actually, I like to chase down some rabbit holes still, but <laughs> not for the boogeyman, like not to find the boogeyman at the bottom of the tunnel, but because whenever you study the conspiratorial or the occult or the symbolic, it does give you a lot of consistent juice of yeah. the everything is everything variety yeah. where you yeah. see all that everything's so connected man and then that's really fun because it lets you know that in a sort of butterfly effect type way that your actions are have the potential to influence dominoes so far away that you can't see the entire trail <laughs> to that point you know that's so true yeah so that's fun. I, I still do when I, I so i get probably 50 60 messages a day from people and once in a while a headline catches my attention and I'll skim over it. And then sometimes I'll get into it for maybe 15 minutes or so. But what I used to do is spend all my time researching. Now I it's it's switched. I now I might spend a half an hour a day saying what's going on and then the rest of the time out doing stuff. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, that makes the most sense. And then, yeah. you know, this is not a complaint. So I want to make sure that it's couched correctly. But the. Uh, viewership of this stream relative to some of the stuff I get into that's more of the, like the symbolism and occult nature. And maybe it's just the day. I'm not, it's not a big deal, but it's a bit lower. And so I'm saying this so that people listening now or listening to the replay that even if you're not putting this stuff into action right now, it's an extremely important that we are seeding your consciousness and your mind with these ideas, because there will be a point in your life, whether it's in six months or six years where you're like, I'm in the place. This is it. I can do it. Food forest. I have, you know, everything I need. But if you don't start by just opening the doors of imagination and perception to the possibility that it doesn't, you know, life can't arrange itself in such a way that you flow there. So share this episode with people, you know, even put it that way if, if you need to, like just listening to this will help you live a better life within, you know, eventually <laughs> just knowing that this is possible will make yeah. your life better. You know, but here's the, the good news is that the folks listening and I'm loving the content uh, comments every once in a while, I look over. Um, thank you all for your comments and for being here and being part of this. Um, there's a couple of things. One is the people who are listening right now are the right people to be listening. And that's why they were here. 
right? And there's going to be more abundance and, and love energy, service energy, and freedom energy that is created from this show than 10 shows that were based on simply some of the conspiracy rabbit holes, right? And uh, d because they're interesting and they draw us in and they're, they're wonderful to get us to, to prepared for what's next, right? We have the why. Why should we be free? Well, these other shows help us wake up to the why. Then the next question is how? And then we start going into the details on the how. Um, that was one thing. There's one other thing. It'll come to me. Well, I've got a great question, solid question from Jennifer, my darling, sweet lady here. She's uh, asking, <laughs> I was like, please, if you have to think of a good question, hit, hit me up with it. And she says, do you recommend animal husbandry for the health of your gardens and food forests? The question is for animal lovers and new beginners. Is there a specific gang of animals you would recommend to start? So we have currently we have bees, chickens, cows and fish. And per, in permaculture, permaculture is mimicking after natural systems or God's design, right? Whatever perspective you come from. And so, yes, absolutely. We love bringing the animals into the system. We use the cow manure. We put it in five gallon buckets or in 50 gallon buckets with compost tea. Sometimes a chicken, we bubble it up and then we put that on the plants and they explode with life, right? So yes, animals, you know, Chickens, for instance, they're called, my friend Michael calls them the Swiss army knife of the food, uh, the permaculture food forest, because they have so many functions, right? They'll eat the wood ticks and they'll eat some of the bugs that eat the plants. As long as you don't have them in a particular spot for too long, then they'll eat. The first things they'll eat are the things you want them to eat. But after they run out of those things, then they'll eat the things you don't want them to eat, right? They can heat your greenhouse in the winter. They can, you know, there's so many neat things that chickens can do. And bees too. Bees are fantastic. Yeah. And then back to that biochar paint thing. Yeah. That's actually helping with the colony collapse issue that has gone on since the EMF ra irradiation of the world. Yep. <laughs> so painting your beehives with the, uh, the biochar that comes from the food forest. And that's very permaculture, how easily that could work. That is so cool. Yeah. Um, and I see we've got about eight minutes left. Is that about right? Or is there a time limit or no? Well, Jim, I usually do uh, an intermission and then come back for a second hour or whatever oh. the guests can do. If that's, okay. if that's not possible for you, that's okay too. No, it, it is possible. I can go till about nine 30. It's eight 52 now. Um, so that's great. Cause I just, there was a couple more things I wanted to get out to, to really help people see that we've got this. There's Absolutely. going to be a, yeah. a tough time for a lot of people, not well, for lay us. Lay it on us, buddy. Okay. So the world is changing radically. Um, there, there are people now, I talk to people all over the world, and there are people now that their countries are collapsing. Uh, Sri Lanka, Lebanon. I mean, Lebanese, they just had all their money seized in their banks, right? All over the world, this is happening. And this is... You can sit in the in the worry of it, or you can sit in the opportunity of it to serve, right? So my questions, as based on the whatever you can conceive and believe you can achieve, is the question is how? And how do we layer all of the pieces of the puzzle? And over the last little bit, um, I just partnered. We, we are now partnering with uh, Brigadier General Blaine Holt. Now, I am not a fan of government at all. And I question him because I'm very, um, well, I'm aware that a lot of people involved um, have had and done things that were not ethical. And General Holt um, has, he's came out, he's, he, he, he retired from the service because of Benghazi. And he is now out there like a true white hat. And by the way, I don't believe in the white hat. This idea that somebody else is going to come save us is ridiculous. It's the most disempowering bunch of garbage ever. If Q or any of that stuff were even partially real, then they would agree. The it's only the messiop. That's what I call it. Completely. Messiop. It's a complete psyop. <laughs> Sit back and eat popcorn and enjoy the show my ass. In Russia, when the communist takeover started back in the 40s, um, they actually had the same play. 
It was called um, Operation Trust. And that was the, the myth was, or the, 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 uh, the psyop was that there are people in, in the government at the time that were going to save us from this communist takeover, right? Now they, it's Operation Trust the Plan. It's just a way to get good people to sit on their asses. Um, and again, it, there are people that we could call white hats in all forms of government, in military, in the medical system, in the school systems, in all of the pillars of society there are really good people who are looking for the solution. I call us, you and I listening to the show, we're the white man or the white hats, right? <laughs> the white, that's we're the I'm white man. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, you brought up 1984 and that's recently been put on a list as, along with like Lord of the Rings and other classics mm -hmm. of white supremacy as something to watch out for. Those are people that are racist if they like that book. Oh my God, right? <laughs> and, and yeah, and if you, if, you, if you hang a civil peace flag, there are three types of flags. There's the captured flag with the yellow trim is what we should be flying. There's the right. war flag, which is what the, the capital is flying. And then there's the civil peace flag which is right here that's what we're flying i, I meant to it. comment on that it's so cool that you're aware of that and you fly that like yeah. this is we're at peace here yeah beautiful yeah yeah and we peace is the ultimate I, I i for fun i'll call it a weapon against evil right um peace is the ultimate solution to evil you know don't strike fear into the hearts of your enemies strike love into the hearts of your enemies. And then they're not your enemies no more. Like, it's just so simple. So um, we- Even generals, even generals, like every human being that's even slightly alive, that life force energy that's animating them, no matter how decrepit and ragged they got, there is that life force energy in them is good. Yeah. And so if you can speak to that, if you can enliven yeah. that in some way, then they be, then the good momentum starts to build up potentially. It's still their choice, but- chance you're there. on it the hundred percent we inspire those people because they're looking for a way so that's our strategy um the strategy is the solution is permaculture which is the design process that basically looks at what works in a natural system mimics it and puts it together in a way that's absolutely awesome and, and radically abundant right that's the solution the next level we're putting together with um, Dr. Pete Chambers, retired Green Beret, the first doctor to become a Green Beret, and who's a tactician, and General Holt, and like John and Christine Nolan from the Inspired Channel, who are our partners, and then many more. We're coming together as organizers, and then we're creating a message, and we have Emmy Award winners helping to craft the message, and then we've got the, the influencers. And thousands of influencers are going to be sharing the same simple message. Um, it'll probably, it, it definitely happened this year. It probably happened sometime in the summertime. And it's going to go out through the GSA, the Global Simultaneous Action Alliance, and all of the influencers at the same time. And it's going to change the world that day. So uh, this is a question I had back when you referenced how the best way to convince somebody that this is a good way to go is to te take them to a food forest. Yeah. Well, you know, I would love to take mom and dad to a food forest or, or show them a permaculture, <laughs> but I, more than that, I just want to, I want to get that energetic upgrade. So do you know of any resources or does food forest abundance have any uh, ability to help connect people to, you know, where there may be permaculture installations or food forests in their local area that yeah. they could go visit? That's what we do. Um, so what I would suggest, everybody listening, get on a call. We have our website and you can sign up for a free 30 minute strategy session. And then you can talk to the designer about who, where, what, why, when, how you can be involved in any way that inspires you. That's the, the first logical step. And then we have like a really amazing network of people all over the world. And it's growing exponentially thanks to people like you sharing the word. That's awesome. Uh, so I want to ask you about the uh, astro weather. Do you guys take that much into account? Because yeah, I'm still fairly new to gardening, but yeah. witnessing the difference between planting seeds, you know, your indoor starts on a new moon versus just whenever there is a really noticeable difference. So do you guys employ any of that in your strategies currently? 
when you say astral weather uh, astrology <laughs> okay work, you know what what the uh what the as above is doing yeah you know, i don't know a lot of the principles behind it but i do know that harvesting on a full moon is good yeah. and planting on a new moon is good and i'm sure there's yeah. more to it than that yeah i just know the tip of the iceberg on that i know after 12 years in costa rica menguante was like followed by every farmer and every grower um all the grandparents knew in fact, the grandmas in Costa Rica knew way more about healing the body than any of the doctors did. Um, but Minguante was when they would plant. So I don't know really much about astro weather. Um, yeah, I, I'm learning. And we do have people involved that are kind of teaching those things, but it's it hasn't come front and center quite yet. Right on. Yeah, that's all good. I mean, the beauty of the permaculture design is that it sort of gets itself in line with the, you know, the, the heavens above it does. It's set up in a way where nature takes over and you're, cause that's one of the things that has been so mythologized by recent, really, I don't know how long the op has been going, but there's been a very clear, whether it's an intentional effort or just everyone has taken on this belief of putting out there that farming and that growing food is like this hard scrabble, low class existence. When, as you're talking about it, like it's actually potentially quite easy. And for all we know, people in previous times in history, were actually living more that way. And it's a psyop again, <laughs> that we, farmers struggle yeah. and barely make it and die. We know they were living that way. I've never grown a plant in my life. I can't, I don't have the ability to grow a plant. What I do have the ability to do is design a home for the plant, to design a home where the plant loves the home. And because of all the neighbors in the community and the, the people, which are other plants in this metaphor, um, they will produce more and more. For instance, a guild is a community of plants that support each other, right? So you've got your nitrogen fixers, your beneficial insect attractors, which are a lot of times are flowers, right? Your comfrey, dynamic accumulators, your Mexican sunflower, which is like a chop and drop, your moringa, which has all sorts of benefits. You put all of these plants in a particular guild or community, and then you walk away for 30 years and come back 30 years later. And not only are some of those plants might have been competed out, but the primary ones will be just exploding with life. And then there'll be a bunch of whole new ones. In fact, um, that buddy in Northern Minnesota, he took an inventory of the plants that were growing around his property, not on his property where he had his food forest, but on the neighboring property. And he estimated that over a hundred thousand plants have been planted in the area around his property because of his food forest. The animals, the wind, the rain, the birds would come in, eat a seed, fly over a mile away and poop. And now you've got a new raspberry bush. So a, the Garden of Eden is expansive by its very nature. And it has taken us thousands of years to get to where we've got right now, which is on the verge of the systemic collapse of everything. Yeah, it actually takes a lot of effort to get to systemic collapse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A lot of effort in the wrong direction. Yeah. And that required the belief that life was hard and hard scrabble and, you know, all the things that came with society up to recent times where you just can't hide the expansiveness of what life and nature is at its essence and automatically. I love all that. And, you know, when you brought up the Russian birds showing up at the food forest for a friend of yours, that's fascinating because I wonder if you have any other anecdotes or thoughts about this. Uh, you, I mentioned Matt Powers and you kind of lit up. Do you know Matt Powers? Uh, I love right? Matt's work right so he's like finding these thermophiles and the uh, apparent spontaneous generation of life forms and yeah. in compost and in soil that's in a sealed container i've got other people that i'm in touch with who using orgone devices yeah. to yeah. again like fight the geoengineering as fight isn't even the right word to just prevent the geoengineering to change the frequency yeah. <laughs> change the frequency yeah. lattice of the environment so that all that stuff can't hang there's no grid work for it to hang on in the air right well 
like in Arizona, where a lot of that work has been done by my friend Mitch, the organ donor, and yeah. people he works with, they've had they've had like monsoon season after monsoon season breaking previously known records for rainfall in the deserts and stuff getting greener and snow happening and all of it, the whole nine and animals and and insects and things that nobody's seen before or thought to be extinct are just showing up. So I think what's going on is that this reality is more mental or holographic or whatever you want to call it than we think. And that life doesn't go extinct. It's that human beings enter a, a form of life where our consciousness is so constricted by fear and belief in the doomsday <laughs> that, and, and just like this routine of like, this is the only thing I do. And I run on this hamster wheel in a loop and nothing changes. And this attempt to be state, you know, in a type of static experience of life, which is not real. Yeah. That's not how nature works. That then we lose the perceptual openness to be connected with all the life that always was and always will be. Yeah. And so the way that we experience that is when, you know, whenever the frequency environment of a location changes, the location changes and life that fits in that environment will just show up, you know, yeah. when you're not looking. <laughs> it does. It, you know, did you say you had to, you wanted to do a break right now? Because that, that'd be cool. Or it's up to you. Um, in, unless you just need a break. I, I thought no, I don't. since you've only got about 25 more minutes, I, I'll respect that. We'll just hang, we'll just roll through as well. Okay. Sounds good, buddy. Um, yeah. so there's something about, I, I have read the, the holographic universe by Talbot. I've read that three times. Mind blowing. Um, that this is a holographic universe and now, nothing is, is extinct. Every, all information, all existence exists always all the time omnipotent omnipresent which isn't different than the god a lot of the spiritual texts and religious texts it's just maybe a different way to look at it maybe a more quote scientific way to look at the same existence of reality the double slit experiment the fact that when we observe reality it actually goes from wave to particle and the fact that there's frequencies that there's infinite I believe infinite frequencies and maybe the, the soil holds the DNA of everything that's ever lived in that area for like yeah. decades and year, hundreds of years. Absolutely. So maybe as we rise up and ascend, our frequencies rise up. Maybe we just find ourselves moving into this garden of Eden and the people who are not ready yet, maybe they stay here. Maybe they, you know, because there are a lot of people suffering, but not nothing I can do. I can't suffer my way into helping them feel good. That doesn't, that's not how it works. So instead I've chosen very consciously to, to be the opposite of that. And theosiasm, like you mentioned, to be inspired. And my gosh, it's like self, selfishly serving. The more I give, the more I receive, right? It's just, it's such an interesting abundance system. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man. Uh, I could stay on this subject for a while. I'm super into the idea that they like things like dinosaurs were like, I always wonder like, why is, why does it seem like dinosaurs are a fake thing? Like they're making that up to create the scarcity belief of fossil fuels that don't really come from fossils and yada, yada. But also I think it's actually really important for the, like there's, we're so freaking powerful that as you said, it's about poisoning and fear and you have to have such heavy doses of poison and fear to fall out of the divine synchronicity yeah. or it's not even that you fall out of it, but just to choose a different life than that, <laughs> to choose a life where you feel disconnected and you're still freaking connected. You can't yeah. be lost from nature. You can't be separate from nature. Nature is all that it, there is, you know? Yeah. So anyway, I think that stuff like dinosaurs and the dodo bird and all these stories have really done a, and a lot of people just spread this because they believed it or they they heard it and they thought it was true. So I'm not like blaming any any certain person, but it's like this mass belief in in boogeyman and in fear and in extinction, extinction, yeah. extinction. Like that word itself is a crazy talismanic, powerful thing I that know. I have come to no longer believe because nothing isn't real. And existence exists. So there where like even in the ancient scriptures, there's some evidence of this. If you like really get into studying symbolism and mythology, uh, as I love to do. And I know you've heard of the story of Noah's Ark and that 
there's that story throughout many cultures. What's interesting, I talk about it a lot, Noah's Ark, but that the earth was actually seen to be like a macrocosmic arc. And then the boat is the microcosm. Wow. And that there's different versions of the cycle of destruction and regeneration of the world. But Eartha and Arga are words that actually came from the same idea, which is this arc idea. And so if the soil, you know, on a material level, we can see that the soil is holding the memory of all the DNA of everything that ever lived on it. Then in some interesting way, it's like the potential never went anywhere for anything that ever existed could just pop right back into existence if the conditions were right. And so in that way, it's like the earth is literally this arc preserving us throughout the ages of eternity. It's amazing. It is amazing. And when you pick up a handful of soil, it's got all these seeds in it, more individual life forms in that handful of soil than there are people on the planet and all the seeds. And somehow with the right frequency, the right conditions, a particular seed will germinate. If the soil is very compact, then a seed will germinate that opens up the soil. If the soil is very loose, then a different seed will germinate that helps create a layer and brings the soil together. It's like infinite design intelligence in, in, in the natural system. It's so beautiful. And what you just said, really, I'm going to, that's going to be kind of fundamental for me is, is talking about it's all there. It's like our canvas. And then when we add our love to it and some design philosophy, we can build whatever. It's so amazing, dude. I'm yeah. getting so, st I knew that talking to you, I would be just really feeling it, but uh, <laughs> I love talking to you. You're what we call in the Interverse community, a mega sundog. Sundog <laughs> is the best you can be. I love you, brother. Thank you. I'm I'm having so much fun. It's just, and I, I see the mycelial network. We put um, seven different types of psilocybin spores in our cattle pasture right? To create that communication network and mushrooms are going to be the next thing, not necessarily psilocybin mushrooms, but just mushrooms in general. We want a diversity of plants. Diversity is the foundation of strength. The more, it's like a symphony. Nature is like this most epic symphony. And the more diversity you have, the more life experience, the more frequency you have. In fact, you mentioned that sometimes it's heavy with the poisons. It's, it's tiny little cuts. It's, it's a million little poisons instead of one big poison. Exactly. Right? Yeah. 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 It doesn't cause <laughs> we're designed to just be so resilient. You know, yeah. we're yeah. like little arcs ourselves in an interesting way. Yeah. Um, so I want, I want to make sure you have space. You said you had other, some ideas you wanted to get out. If there's anything left hanging on the table, please get to that. But I also wanted to make sure that you told people about the, uh, the Jim Gale show. And I'm okay. curious if there's anything you've learned from doing that, that you want to share with us or tell people about the Jim Gale show. Cause that wasn't going on last time we talked. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Just, it's just amazing talking to people that are looking for solutions. And then coming together. And that's been the magic is all sorts of amazing people are coming together right now. It's like we're finding each other. I've made more dear friends, close friends in the last two years than I have in my whole life put together. You know, there's something about the tuning fork, the resonance, the frequency where we're coming together and being like, there, it's easy to know somebody who is transparent. It's like, oh, yeah, I see you. Just like the avatar thing. I see you. I love that part of avatar is I see you because I'm conscious enough myself and I can see you're conscious too. And there's something really beautiful about that. And now we're starting to see each other. Real, recognize real. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, you're so tapped in, man. I was like thinking at you, like, uh, I'll come on your show and talk about tuning forks. And then you're yes. like, tuning fork. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Dude, that, I would love to learn about tuning forks. That is so right up our alley. Yeah. Since we last talked, I've really gone deep into tuning humans, energy fields and helping them find things about themselves that they were hiding, you know, from themselves, like pushing off to the side into their energy field somewhere. Cause dude, that, that is fascinating. We should talk about it. If you want to do a Jim Gale, talk about it. Uh, Cause in a nutshell, the energy field around your body has an anatomy that you can read like a book and where you find stuck energy we using the tuning fork as your detection tool 
you can tell people when and what was going on that they're not integrating properly. And then cool. them shining their light of awareness on it is just like, phew, and they can make a different choice and everything can shift. It's powerful stuff. Dude, I am so in. There's something big about that. So yesterday, um, Dr. Daryl Wolf, um, some people might have heard of him. He's very famous out there. He's a healer. And he spent the last couple of days at Galt's Landing and he did some healing sessions with me. And I mean, I'm talking like, see my arm, you see that? Ooh, yeah. Yeah, that. And then something on my chest right, right there. Um, he found places where I had some um, stuckness, right? I, I said, my shoulder hurts a little bit. He goes, let me feel it. And he touched it. He immediately knew. In fact, he looked at me and he said, you're type O blood. I'm like, how do you know that? He knew it, right? He Because when you're so into something for so long, you know things that other people don't understand how we know or understand how we know them. But anyway, so he did these processes on me and he tore out using his elbow. He actually went in and, and opened up pathways that had been closed due to scar tissue. He said, Jim, you give your heart out and sometimes you get a broken heart. And I'm like, I kind of had forgot about that. But as he was digging on me, these memories were coming and I was remembering. And there was like, he would hit a certain spot and he'd rip off some scar tissue. And all of a sudden there'd be this wave of heat that would go through my body. And it was like, Whoa! it was freaking crazy. It was like way over an hour. And yeah, that, that spot where on the right shoulder that you showed yeah. Yeah. That per like that part of your body is a whenever there's stuckness there, it means that you've had a tendency to say yes, even when you kind of internally you meant no, to the point of even allowing some people who are a little vampiric to take you for a bit of a ride because you just want to give, give, give. Yeah. And uh so you know, getting that work done, you might have some improvement with your ability to have boundaries because that's important too, even yeah. though you know we have in infinite well of energy but there's this other thing about like when the intention they don't come correct the, uh, yeah. the other and we just say yes to it anyway it's like we're sort of programming universe of like yeah i want more of that just take advantage of me because ultimately this <laughs> our mutual friend tofer put it really nicely last time we talked last week and he was like this is the plane of inertia this is the yeah. the part of existence where everybody gets their wish everybody yeah. gets what you they want and like, yeah. that is so key. You do get what you want. So just yeah. align what you want with what's actually good for you. <laughs> right. <laughs> Radically. Yeah. So you, um, I just, uh, a question, who is I talking about? Dr. Daryl Wolf is the person who is just amazing healer. Um, now you touched on another thing him. is yeah. Oh, he's fantastic about boundaries. This is profound. The best decision I've ever made in my life in business is to choose to not work with anybody who advocates for force and violence. Anybody who says that I should be wearing a mask or that the, he, they believe that the government should have the right to tell me whether I get an injection or not. Force and violence is the cutoff. And when I made the decision based on past suffering by saying yes, I invited a lot of people into my communities in Costa Rica just because they showed up and about half of them, maybe nah, not half, maybe 20%, 25%. They're just so loud that it seemed like half. They were completely takers. They were energy vampires who didn't want to do anything, but they wanted me to do everything for them. And I'd say, yes, yes, yes. And then I, it was, the most important thing that I needed to learn at that time. So if anybody's out there doing business, when you recognize who somebody is and you choose to not engage in business with anybody who advocates for any force and violence, it will, it'll save you a lot of suffering. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then what's great is you don't have to like constantly be putting up walls and like, no, 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 no. It's, yeah. You just every once in a while, universe will do a little boundary check on, on you, <laughs> just like your dog will every once in a while while you're walking it be like, I'm going to pull now. Yeah. You know, <laughs> whenever universe gives you that boundary check, you just like, no, nope, this is my preference. This is my preference. Yeah. And keep giving it. Yeah, right. man. Uh, so my my three year old just came in. Sorry about that. Go ahead. 
Oh, awesome. Dude, congrats on, on the family life too. I've got That's four awesome. daughters. They're my motivations, uh, 18, 16, 13, and three. And that is like when I'm thinking about getting out of bed in the morning, I think about my daughters and the world we're creating and I get out of bed and it's joyful. <laughs> it's like completely wild to imagine the starting point that like your kids will have versus where we started then where our parents started it's just yeah. awesome life expands grow 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 we're doing right? it yeah it's beautiful uh and jim anything else you want to get into with us i don't want to keep you from your kids i just i want to invite everybody listening to participate it's fun it's joyful if you want to make a business out of helping the world be free if you want to grow food during a food supply chain collapse it's fantastic to do this and it's logical on every level. There's no reason other than ignorance not to step up right now and to lead. The world needs leaders, it, will, it needs demonstrators, people who are willing to step in with faith and courage and say, I do not comply with force and violence publicly and here's what I'm gonna do about it. I'm gonna serve, I'm gonna grow food, I'm gonna enjoy life. That's what we're asking. So if anybody wants to join us, please do foodforestabundance.com. Yeah. And such a generous offer to give the 30 minute consult. You know, I want to reiterate for, for anyone that came in a little late. Uh, what's that offer again, that people can talk for 30 minutes with a planner. Yep. They can talk for 30 minutes with any of our, uh, one of our designers and the designers are so passionate about this. They love it. It's they're having so much fun. They'll, um, talk with you for 30 minutes. If you want to then give them a tip, we don't even really talk about that, but if, if you do find value, you want to leave maybe a review on Google or something. I, I mean, I know those systems are all scam, but it's the way the world works. So um, it's completely free. You don't have to give your credit card, none of that stuff. You just sign up, they'll schedule it, and you'll talk for 30 minutes, and then you can decide which way you want to go from there. Awesome. All right, guys, uh, make sure you're checking out the Jim Gale Show on YouTube. Food for, foodforestabundance.com is the website. And man, just thank you for the tireless enthusiasm. Thank this you. This work brother. is incredible. It's a lot of fun too. Thank you, Chance. And thank you, everybody. I love your comments. I love your energy. And I look forward to meeting you at Galt Landing. If you're ever in Central Florida, look us up and, and we'll give you a tour of our uh, off-grid community. Oh man, that's so good. There's a lot of Florida people that tune in actually. A lot of Florida, Florida people in the community. So Great. Well, thank you so much, Jim. Have a great right. night, man. You too. Thanks, everybody. Ciao.